This lesson is on solving rational equations. Rational equations can be solved both algebraically and graphically. So what is a rational equation? Well, you can see the examples on the page. It's an equation, so it's got an equal sign, where you have a polynomial in the numerator and a polynomial in the denominator. So we're going to find values of x that satisfy this equation. In order to solve them algebraically, what we're going to want to do is we're going to want to clear this fraction. So we're going to want to get rid of the denominator. And we can do so by multiplying all sides, or both sides and all terms, by the lowest common denominator. This is going to clear the fraction, and it's going to produce a polynomial equation, which we've been solving for actually the past two units. Then what we have to do is we have to verify that the solutions that are generated when we solve the polynomial equation are not part of the restrictions. So we'll have a set of restrictions initially, values of x that are not permissible because they would cause the denominator to be equal to zero. The other way we can solve rational equations is graphically, and we'll see that in the final example. So let's go ahead and get started by uh, solving the first example right here, x minus 2, all divided by x squared minus x plus 16. So I have that equation equal to 0. Uh, and what I'm going to do is I'm just going to look at the denominator here. And I'm unable to get any restrictions just by looking at this. So what I'm going to want to do first is I'm going to want to uh, factor it. All right, so I'm going to go ahead and factor this denominator, and then I'm left with x minus 2 all over x minus 4 and x minus 4, or x minus 4 squared, right? Equals to 0. And so I get this because I look for two numbers that multiply to positive 16 and add to negative 8. Now that this is in factored form, I'm able to state my restriction. x cannot be equal to positive 4. All right, seeing that this is a fraction that is equal to 0, I know that a fraction is only equal to 0 when the numerator is equal to 0, so I can say therefore x minus 2 has to be equal to 0, and x is equal to positive 2. I check right here that the, um, the solution that I have right here is not part of the restrictions, and so this is, in fact, the answer to the first question. In the next example, um, I have solve x minus 2 over x plus 1 equals to x plus 3 over x minus 4. So immediately, I'm able to write my restrictions. I know that x cannot be equal to negative 1, and x cannot be equal to positive 4. Now, as it said initially, I want to clear these fractions so I can get a polynomial equation. And I clear the fractions by multiplying this entire equation, both sides, by the lowest common denominator. All right, so how am I going to get a lowest common denominator when I have these, uh, you know, the, these basically rational expressions here and here? Okay, so if I look normally how to get a common denominator, you'll see, you know, if you have 1 over 2 plus 1 over 3, we know that the common denominator there is going to be 6, right? Because that's the least common multiple. So I can just basically take these two denominators and multiply them together to get the lowest common denominator. If I look at this rational equation, I can basically do the same thing. I can say that my lowest common denominator would be the product of both denominators. So x plus 1 and x minus 4. Again, much in the same way that I multiplied 2 and 3 to get the lowest common denominator there of 6, I am going to multiply the two uh, denominators here uh, to get the lowest common denominator. Now I'm going to multiply this side by this and this side by this as well. All right. So let's start right here, uh, multiplying the left side by x plus 1 and x minus 4. So x plus 1 
x minus 4 times x minus 2 all over x plus 1 equals x plus 3 all over x minus 4 times, again, we're going to multiply by the lowest common denominator, x plus 1 and x minus 4. Okay, what this allows me to do then is it clears the fraction from this rational equation. So x plus 1 gets cancelled, x minus 4 will be cancelled. And on the left side, I am left with x minus 4, x minus 2 equals x plus 3, x plus 1. I'm now going to expand the left side and I get x squared minus 6x plus 8 equals x squared plus 4x plus 3. Okay, I'm going to bring everything over to one side. So I'm choosing to bring everything over to the left side. Remember, to solve a polynomial equation, I have to make one side equal to zero. So I'm going to bring the left side, everything over to the left side. x squared minus x squared minus 6x minus 4x plus 8 minus 3 equals 0. Okay, I can see that the x squared minus x squared will cancel to equal to 0. Negative 6x minus 4x will equal to negative 10x. And then 8, oops, sorry about that. And then 8 minus 3 is going to give me positive 5, which is equal to 0. Okay, I'm just going to bring my solution right up here. Uh, I'll have then negative 10x is equal to negative 5. And as we can see here, x is going to be equal to negative 5 over negative 10, which is just 1 over 2. I have to go back here, and I have to check if uh, it's uh, part of the restrictions. It is not, so therefore this is my final answer right here. Okay, the last question is actually fairly quick. A rational equation is essentially you have a function on this side equal to a function on the other side, right? This right here is a rational function and this right here is a rational function. And so essentially I am asking the question, for what values of x does this rational function equal this rational function right here? And these two rational functions will be equal at their points of intersection. So going back up to the uh, top of the document right here, you can graph the two functions and find the points of intersection. So we graph the function on the left and we graph the function on the right. So I know uh, your document is probably grayscale. Um, so what I'll say is this right there, this uh, equation represents the blue function. And this equation right here represents the red function. And so all I'm looking at when I graph these two functions, you can see this is the left side. Sorry, excuse me. This is the left side of the equation and this is the right side of the equation. 1 over x plus 3, 1 over x plus 3, 2x plus 1 over x plus 4. Okay, so I just basically graph the two equations, and as you can tell, I've done it in Desmos over here, and I'm finding the points of intersection, and then I say x is approximately equal to, well, what are the x values for the points of intersection? Negative 2.823, and I can tell that those are approximated, and x is approximately equal to negative 0.1. Seven, seven. All right, and so that is sufficient to um, find my points of intersection. All right. Okay, so um, just to re recap, effectively what we do is we're going to want to factor so that we can make sure we can state all the uh, possible restrictions. 
uh, and then we you know move every uh, we're going to want to clear the fraction so in this case right here we cleared the fraction moved everything over to one side solved the polynomial equation and found values of x this is all an algebraic method of solving rational equations you can also solve them by graphing so you graph the left side function and you graph the right side function and you find where they're equal to each other and that is when they uh, intersect okay thanks for watching